Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the South Florida Tribune Podcast. This is Scott Morgan, Roth, the Motor City Manmouth, and I'm joined by Joe Littman. Welcome to the broadcast, Joe. How are you? Let everybody know out here, a local national, who the heck you are. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. My name is Joe Littman. I am an attorney with the Noor Law Group, which is a property damage law firm right here in Coral Springs, Florida. Uh, we are a small boutique uh, law firm that specializes in first party property damage insurance claims. And you're probably wondering, well, what the heck is that? Uh, that means we represent the interests of residential and commercial property uh, and policyholders in their claims against their homeowners or commercial insurance uh, companies. Uh, Linda Knorr, the other attorney at the firm, and I have a combined 50 years of experience as attorneys and over 35 years of combined experience handling insurance claims litigation. And uh, what I would like to, to do here uh, before we uh, you know, have uh, you know, questions and answers is just to give you a little background of, of, of why someone might want to choose to hire a lawyer to help them with a property damage insurance claim and some tips on what you should do uh, after claim and, and actually what you should really do before you even have a claim because there's some things that, that you really should start looking into doing before you even have a, a, a claim to, to report. So first, why hire a, a lawyer to help you with your property damage insurance claim? Well, it could be confusing and frustrating for some property owners uh, to handle their own claim. Uh, your insurance policy has all sorts of duties and conditions that you have to comply with before and after filing a complaint and if, 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 or a claim. And if you are not familiar with th that process, it can be a little bit daunting and some people don't really feel comfortable doing it themselves. Um, after filing a claim, there's a lot of information and documentation that, that you might be required to provide uh, to your insurance company uh, per the uh, policy of insurance. And if this information and documentation is not provided um, properly and correctly and timely, uh, it may affect your rights uh, under the policy and, and the resolution of your claim. Uh, you might be required to take certain action, for example, uh, safeguard your property to prevent further damage, um, hire a mitigation company to, to get rid of uh, mold or clean up water. And uh, if you don't do that, that can affect your rights. Um, a property damage attorney can assist you through all of this in the claim process. And if necessary, and you have to file a, a lawsuit against your insurance company, they could obviously help you with that too. And recover the insurance funds available under your policy of insurance that, that you need to uh, rebuild your property back to its pre-loss condition. Um, a lot of times, people are not aware of this, but uh, when the insurance companies delay and underpay or even deny valid insurance claims, uh, you can fight them on that. A lot of people don't realize that. They, they get their insurance check and the, and the letter of explanation, they cash it, they do the repairs. And a lot of people realize that they don't just have to accept what their insurance company's decision is on whether the claim is, is uh, uh, covered or if, it's, if, if they do cover it and they just pay a portion of, of, of your damages. Uh, you know, a, a prime example is if you have roof damage and they just want to pay for some repairs, but your roof might have to be completely replaced. So sometimes they'll only make a small payment when a, when a much larger payment is, is uh, warranted. And if you don't have, you know, someone, you know, on your side, uh, you, you, you might just go ahead and, and just, just take whatever they give you and, and, and not pursue your, your full rights. So an insurance, uh, a, a property damage um, law firm such as ours can help you with, uh, sorting those things out. Um, our firm provides free initial consultations, so uh, and there's no risk to you. So if you should decide to hire a law firm such as ours uh, to uh, help you with a claim, you would not be responsible for paying any fees unless we achieve a positive result for you. And in such case, our fee would be paid out of a recovery from an insurance company. Um, and if we don't make a recovery, for you, you wouldn't be responsible for paying any fees. Now, the, the, the next thing I wanted to go over was uh, sort of things to, to, to keep in mind before a claim and then obviously what you need to do, uh, you know, to file a claim and, and, and after a claim. Uh, 
Uh, before before claim, chat, though, I want to introduce Ron Renzi. He joins oh. us on this broadcast. That's okay. A couple times a month. We're all going to be doing some sports. Obviously, I want to make sure the audience mm -hmm. realizes that uh, my name is Scott Morganroth. Once again, in case you're just joining us with the Motor City Mad Mouth, uh, this is the South Florida Tribune podcast. Ron Renzi is my co-host on this broadcast. But we do it a couple times a month. Ron does also appear on uh, sports shows and of course the one thing all of us have in common is we're all part of the Wednesday referral group for the Coral Springs Regional Chamber of Commerce yeah. so so let everybody know that well you're good. I guarantee you one thing you're going to learn a lot from this broadcast okay Joe continue <laughs> well, actually I, I, I adequate this is Ron uh, here I just want to hey, Ron. hey hey Joe I just want to get uh, hey, before you go over what you need to do before I was learning a lot on, on what you were just saying so I want to ask a little hypothetical let's say there's a fellow, his name is uh, Morgan Roth Scott. He's got three names. His name is Morgan, middle name Roth. And let's say Mr. Scott has um, water in his house and ends up being like a pipe that bursts, something like that. Okay. What do you, what do you recommend? Like, what are the stages of, of how he should proceed? Like, let's say it happens, you know, uh, on a Tuesday night. What do, you, what do you recommend he should do and when should you get involved in a situation like that? Okay, well, the very first thing is, obviously, if he's there when it happens and he knows it's, it's happening, you know, the first thing is to stop whatever is causing uh, the, the damage, uh, to, 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 you know, <laughs> you cap your losses. So if you're able and you know how to turn off your water to your home, obviously, that's the first thing to do. If, if you're not, find someone who, who does know. Um, you know, sometimes it can be as simple as, as, as turning the, the water off in a particular room. Like let's say it's a, it's a bathroom and a toilet's overflowing or a sink's overflowing, whatever. Um, just turn the water off at, at the source there. If that doesn't do it, then there's a water shut off in the outside of the house. That, that's the first thing you want to do. Second is to determine, you know, what the severity of it is, you know, did, did you come home and water was flowing for hours and your house is completely flooded or were you fortunate enough to catch it while it, it happened and then there's only a little bit of water? So only you're, you're going to have to see what scenario it is. If, if, if your water is completely, I mean, if your home is completely submerged underwater because it's been hours and hours, you might have to contact a, a water mitigation company. There, there are specialized companies that come in and they perform what's called a dry out. And they'll come with machines, um, uh, you know, fans and uh, HEPA filters and all, all sorts of things. And they'll, they'll drill holes in, in, in the baseboards of your um, uh, of your walls. Like if 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 a, a a pipe burst like inside the wall or something like that. So you know they'll they'll know what to do um, in, in those situations. And then. You know, God forbid, if you have molds, then you know you would need to, to get a mold remediator in there to, to to take care of that. So those are the type of, the, but that might not be something you need right away. But the, the water mitigation m m might be something. Um, then you know, calling a plumber uh, to find out what the problem was, and obviously uh, make a timely c claim with your, your your insurance company. That that's that, that's what I was going to go into in, in, in my you know next point was yeah, go right ahead. Yeah, let me, yeah that, let me that, that, that's that's probably the most important thing from from a, from a claim perspective is is, is making making a timely claim because the longer you wait uh, the more uh, the insurance company will defend based upon uh, you know there, there's there's provisions in the policy that, that require prompt uh, notice and sometimes people wait you know they'll wait a week or two weeks or, or so and the longer you wait the more you give them an argument to, to say, we, we, we can't pay your claim because we were pre prejudiced in our investigation because we weren't able to see the damages timely. Um, another thing is if you did have a burst water pipe and you call a plumber and they're going to fix it, um, it, 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 it'd be best if the insurance company could come there and see what was damaged first. So if like, for instance, you, you turn off the water, the problem's not happening anymore. If you can get your insurance company to come out and see what it's like then, that would be best and then have your plumber fix it rather than have your plumber fix it. And then the insurance company comes out and they don't know what happened. And then you have to, you have to fight over what the cause was. I mean, if, if, if for some reason you do have to have your plumber come out first, make sure that they document everything. They, they take pictures of everything and they save whatever like 
part if, if, if you know, if that's applicable. Sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. Sometimes it's behind a wall, and you, 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 you know. Um, but th th those, like, those are the basic things that you, you, you would do. And then you submit, you know, you submit your claim to the insurance company, and that, you know, it really depends on what they do to see what, what if you need to take, if you need, need to escalate things. I mean, if, if, if they underpay and, or deny or uh, delay your claim, you might need somebody to help you and, and, you know, with the claim. If they come out and, and right on the spot, they stroke you a check for all the money you could possibly need, then, then you're good. <laughs> but typically insurance companies don't do that. So that's why, that's why uh, you know, people wind up needing attorneys to help them. Uh, with, so, with which the is, so that's so, a good time to give you a call So at, yeah. at that point. Would you liken the way that you're compensated in terms of like a personal injury type of person where they get so much based on what they get paid, you know, incentive wise. So for example, if you have a 60, 40 split, that's how you get paid instead of asking up all that money up front. If somebody it, it, doesn't have it. it. It's similar, but there's differences. Okay. There's, there's actually a provision in, in the Florida statutes uh, for insurance claims where the insurance company is, uh, required to pay attorney's fees if a, uh, in, you know, if an insured is successful in obtaining a recovery against them. So you can get your, your, your claim, your fees paid. Now that only, ha that only works once you file a lawsuit. So for instance, if the insurance company is, is giving you a hassle and you haven't filed a suit yet and you have to get an attorney involved um, prior to filing a claim, then, uh, then the we would, an attorney would, would most likely have to take a percentage of the claim, um, just like a, a public adjuster would uh, okay. as well. Okay. Yeah, Joe, I, I, you were about to say, I guess all policies aren't created equal. So we're going to, is it something, is it something that we, you know, should look for in our policies when determining, well, when we're buying insurance for our homes? Yeah, and, and that was the topic I was going to cover next with regard to what should be done before and after claim. Obviously, before a claim, you, obviously, you're not going to know when you're going to have a claim right. if it's like a burst water pipe. Right. If there's a hurricane coming, you might have some idea, okay, I better start preparing. Okay. But in, in any event, whether it's a water pipe or a hurricane, fire, what have you, you know, no, no time, now is a good time, anytime is a good time. It, to, to look over your policy and make sure you have the right amount of insurance because you know most people they have insurance because their mortgage company makes them have ins <laughs> insurance mm -hmm. and they, they, they call their agent and they get a policy but th not all policies are the same you know one size does not fit all some policies have uh, exclusions in them that others ones don't um, I was just discussing this with uh, Linda Nora of, of my firm. We both have uh, uh, a particular insurance company that caps uh, their water damages at ten thousand mm. dollars, and it's very, very easy if you have a, a, a burst water pipe to have damage that's more than ten thousand um, dollars. There are some companies that, if your house is over a certain age, won't include water damage coverage because they're concerned about the old, you know, cast iron water pipes. Um, so you really have to check your policy to see what it, what it provides, not only in, in, in amounts of coverage, but what, it, what it, uh, it excludes and what it covers and what your deductibles are. I saw one policy today that I was shocked. Um, the, the hurricane deductible was 10%, so the, the deductible was like $37,000. Wow. Yeah, most, most of them are about 2%. Um, so, you know, a lot of people's, you know, for average house, the, the deductible is somewhere between like five and $8,000, but $37,000 for an average yeah. house is, is quite, you know, <laughs> so don't just assume that when you're applying for, for, a, a policy that, you know, you, what, the, what you're going to get is what, what you need and, and read through it because most people, they, they, they get the declarations page that shows you what the amounts of coverage are. And then later on. You might not actually get the policy. It might just be, you know, online. You might have to download it. But if you don't look at it, uh, you could be, you know, you you could be in for a shock. One, if 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 
the unfortunate event happens that you have to make a claim and then you find out that the coverage you have is either not, you know, adequate, you know, for your, your loss or, you know, something was, was not covered uh, that, that should have been. And another thing is, is there, there are certain um, insurance companies that have uh, a provision where they can do the repairs they can they can opt to do the repairs for you, so you don't have a choice. Um, and a lot of people probably don't realize this when, when they buy that policy. They just they just want to get a, 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 the least expensive policy that they can. But you know, if if you're the type of person who wants to choose their own contractors and not have the insurance company choose the contractor for you, then that might not be the policy that you want. So that's that's just another example of of what to look for when you're shopping for policies. And if you have a good uh, insurance agent that you trust, then then that they should be able to steer you, uh, steer you right. Joe, I was, you're talking about the different policies and the amounts of coverage. Is that usually, is that determined by, when, when you get quoted, is that something that the mortgage company determines? Like you get a policy and it says, this is the amount you're covered to say, you know, your, your amount to rebuild or the amount of interior. And sometimes you'll just be given in it. Yeah. How, do, how does that even come about? Well, I mean, an agent could tell you better, but from from what I understand, I mean, obviously your mortgage company just wants <laughs> their interest covered. But right. most, from what I understand, most insurance company has, they have a algorithm, a system that calculates what your, what your uh, rebuilding costs will be. And they just, they just go with what that system tells them. And every company has a slightly different system. So if you get quotes from different companies, some will, will quote you um, based upon a certain, uh, you know, coverage limit. And, and like I, I've had quotes that, that varied as much as a hundred thousand dollars really? you know, okay. because different companies have, have, have different algorithms. I mean, yeah, you, you, I mean, you definitely don't want to pay for more than what you need and be o- overinsured. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's better that than being under, underinsured. We had mm-hmm. one uh, client down in the Keys uh, that unfortunately, after Hurricane Irma, that the insurance company paid out the, the full policy limits um, and they didn't have enough to, to, to repair and rebuild their property because their coverage uh, was too low. So, you know, that, that's another thing to, to make sure. I mean, most people don't have that problem. The, the reason why they had it down there was because they had to comply with the more current codes in, in when they were rebuilding and that got really expensive. And then there's a, there's a provision in policies called ordinance and law. And most people probably don't even know what that is, but it's usually a, a percentage of your policy it could be 10%, could be 25%. And that's when uh, you have to, when, 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 repairing a property or, or, or rebuilding a property um, you have to comply with, with some sort of uh, municipal code or stat or, or, or uh, statute it could be the building code or it could be a Florida statute um, in the rebuilding. And that would, you know, in, you would incur additional costs in, in having to, to comply. And, you know, in that case, I was just telling you about, it was a substantial amount uh, to, to, to comply with the more current codes and it just made rebuilding their property uh, uh, not financially feasible. Gotcha. You know, I, I also was kind of listening to you and I know you have to prepare, you know, for any eventuality that's going to happen. Is it different for these, um, let's say the hurricane related things like you see on the news, you know, five days out, we're in the, uh, you know, in, in the zone. Is there something you should do for that? Versus something that could happen anytime, like the fire, the, well, the, the, the pipe, you know, anything like that. Well, there's things, well, I mean, there's things you could do for both. And uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, if, if, if all of us had, you know, pl- no, you know, no issue with time and, and, and yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we could do everything that we need to do, then for any particular claim, it's always a good idea to, for instance, like, you know, take photographs of your property, mm. um, not, not only uh you know just general o- o- overshots but like you know actual up close pictures of, of of your your ceilings and your walls and you know all, all the rooms of your house um you know the floors uh contents like your furniture and clothing stuff like that because if you did have a loss 
then you know, the insurance company, it, it, you know, you, you want to establish that your house was perfectly fine before the loss, but now after the loss, you know, it's, it's really damaged. You know, what better evidence uh, is there that, look, I have all these photos, my house in tip top condition, and here's the after photos that you're seeing now, you know, from, from the inspector that came afterwards, look at the difference. Uh, you know, the, the best cases that we have, and, and we've had several of these, is where um, our, our, our clients had just remodeled their homes in like the year before they had a loss. And they had all these beautiful pictures of their house. And they're like, you know, we're not making a, a bogus claim here. I mean, we're not just trying to upgrade our, our house for free. Because insurance companies, you know, they get suspicious, especially in South Florida, where there's a lot of fraud going on. They tend to get suspicious on, about certain claims. And, you know, a, a claim looks really good when someone had, you know, just spent a whole bunch of money uh, remodeling their kitchens and bathroom. And, you know, and there's no possible reason why they could possibly be asking the insurance company to pay for a new kitchen when it, when it was already in tip top, you know, beautiful shape as is. So, yeah, if you, if you could take those photos to document the, the, the current condition of, of your house and, um, yeah, and, and your content so that if, you know, God forbid, uh, you had a loss, you, you could you could show, um, you know. That, now, on the flip side, if, if your house is a complete wreck, <laughs> that's not going to that's not going to really help you all that much. Right. That's a good point. <laughs> but uh, uh, so I mean that that's one thing that that, that you can do. Uh, other things are you know make, make it, it, this is more likely for for a, a hurricane um, where you might have a loss of power and you might not be able to print out your policy or or get information about your insurance policy, et cetera. But, you know, ha have a copy of your policy um, ready. Um, you know, have the phone number for your insurance company's claim department available uh, so that, you know, if, 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 you, if we had a hurricane and, you know, power went out and you, you couldn't access these things online, you have it there at, at, at the ready so you can call them. And, and, and what you definitely want to do is, you know, report it, uh, right away, because uh, the longer you wait, the, the 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 more that the insurance company is going to claim that there's some sort of prejudice uh, that, that that happened, um, be, you know, because of the delay. And you want to call them first before you have someone come out and, and, and fix anything. Uh, and, and, and the problem is, yeah, I mean, you have to do the best you can. The problem is, like, when you have a hurricane, and, and, and all of us have probably experienced this. I've experienced this people are not going to come out right away. <laughs> you know, you're not going to get an adjuster to come the same day. You have a, you have a burst pot water pipe. Someone might come out the same day from the insurance company. They might write you a check this, the, because nobody else is having the problem that you're having. But when you have a hurricane right. affect a wide, you know, area, everybody's going to have the same problem at the same time. And, you know, it, you know, you know how difficult it is to get someone to come take a look at your roof or remove trees or whatever. And some people are just like, Hey, they see someone down the street doing some work, you know, come over here, I'll, you know, I'll pay you cash to, to fix something. And, and we've actually had clients where that's happened and they had uh, a, a roofing company that just happened, to ha just happened to be driving through the area, do like a temporary fix for them. Um, just, just so the water wasn't coming in, in their house and they were able to get there before the insurance company got there and the insurance company, lo and behold, like, Hey, you already did repairs. You already did stuff. How, we, we, now we can't see, uh, what it looked like, you know, during the loss. So, I mean, an, insur an insured you know, homeowner is kind of like in a catch 22 because there's a, there's a provision under the policy that, 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 that requires you to take action to safeguard your house from further damage. But on the other hand, you have a duty to, to show the, the, the insurance company what, what, what the, the damage was. So you have to balance <laughs> those two things out. Uh, and, some, and sometimes it, it, it could be hard. But, you know, if, 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 if at all possible, you know, it, it's best to, 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 to try to safeguard your property in such a way that it doesn't uh, affect the insurance company's ability to uh, – to inspect, like for instance, if you could put a tarp up to stop water from coming in, that would be probably better than than having a temporary repair made, um, you know, to, to fix the roof because it's not a you know invasive, destructive uh, process. And so uh, that has catch twenty two written all over it. Yeah, it does. It definitely, it definitely does. It definitely yeah. does. Yeah. Um, 
but but it's 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 important that you do that. I mean, one 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 of the you know one of the the duties that that an insured has after a loss is to make sure that their their property is is uh, you know you, you prevent further loss. Right. And you know that that you know putting a tarp up is one way, but also as we were discussing earlier, if you have a, a water loss and, and there's there's you know your your house is flooded with water, right? You can't just let it sit that way. You have to, you know, mm-hmm. if, if if because then mold might grow and then you have more damages. So the insurance company is expecting you to be you know doing what you need to do to uh, you know to, to to remediate and and uh, 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 minimize your damages. Well, you're but, trying to take a shortcut in some respects to try to minimize the damage on one end, but then you're in a catch-22, and then you wonder what you've got to do. I mean, I mean, you don't want any further damage to occur because let's forget about not only just the walls, but what about the smell and a lot of the other medical conditions that could apply outside of just the physical appearance of the home? I mean, I don't know whether – I'm sure we'll probably touch on that just a little bit here today, but – but when we talk about the aesthetics of the house, structurability, and so forth, I had a cousin myself that had severe water damage out in North Dade County. And, you know, she finds herself dealing with the insurance companies, uh, mold and water restorations. And she also has a place up in Asheville, North Carolina. So, you know, and, and, it, and these processes do take quite a while. They don't yeah. resolve themselves overnight as much as we'd like to think they do. So yeah, they can. But, continue, but continue on. You're, go, well, yeah. you're on a roll if you got me. <laughs> okay. Well, so, I just had a quiet wonder of there. So, because you, uh, what's just something on mind, if something, let's say it's a storm and you have damage, but maybe you're not really sure, you know, because you're not, you know, a lot of people aren't going to go on the roof after a storm or is it safe just to report if you even think there may be an issue, even though you're not you, sure yet? You, you know, the funny thing is I, I actually did that exact same thing. Um, really? A, a, a lot of people are probably, you know, locally are probably aware that hurricane Irma hit us just about three years ago. It was September right. 10th, 2017. Right. And uh, and it's too late for all you all now if you have hurricane <laughs> Irma damages to, to report it for the first time. But the you know pursuant to uh, Florida law, you have three years after a um, you know something like that it happens like a hurricane um, to give your insurance company notice uh, of your loss. Or if you've already given notice of your loss and they've made some sort of payment and you need to reopen the claim and supplement supplement the claim, you have three years from the date of loss to be able to do that. So the day before that three year deadline happened, um, I, I own a rental property, the uh, house they used to live in. And my tenant calls me up and says, Hey, the, the roof's leaking. And I'm like, Oh, great. And uh, there's no way I was going to be able to get somebody out there to take a look at it, to see what the reason for it was. And if it could possibly have been hurricane Irma related, because we've had, uh, clients as recent as you know just before the three-year deadline um, you know noticed for the first time that they had uh, damage I mean it seems it seems kind of odd like how do you not know before then but like Scott said you don't go up on your roof or most people don't go up on the roof they don't see the condition of it right. and there's a lot of people who had leaks in in, in the months or, or years after Irma and uh, they were unsure and you know, we were able to send our uh, uh, an engineering firm that we that we've uh, uh, associated with. Well, we're not associated with them, but but who's done work for us that we trust uh, because they've told us on many occasions after looking, no, we don't think that's an Irma claim. You know, we don't think yeah, that just looks like ordinary wear and tear. So we we know that when they give us an opinion, it's going to be a straight opinion. They're not just going to say anything that we <laughs> we send them to is going to be a, a valid claim. So. Um, you know, we, 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 you know, we have, uh, resources like that to tell us whether some, something like that, you know, is a valid hurricane claim or not. So in my personal example, I had no idea. So just to be safe, I reported it. And I told him exactly that. I said, look, I, I, I had this, this, this damage, this, this, you know, water leak. I have no idea if it's hurricane related or not, but I, I, you know, I just want to be, safer than sorry. Now I can understand why some people might want to do that. Might, they might feel 
that their insurance company is going to drop them if they, if they do this. But the, the, the issue is, and, and, I, and we've had clients like this too as well, who have the same issue that, that, that I've had where o- over the years, they, they noticed that there, were, there was water leaks and they didn't put two and two together and think this could be hur- hurricane related. And they just hired someone to do the repairs. And, you know, six months or a year later, another leak hired someone else to do the repairs six months or, or a year later. Finally, somebody comes and says, Hey, this is hurricane damage with, after they've done two repairs already. And then they want to make a claim. And then the insurance company says, well, you've already made <laughs> two repairs without telling us that, that you had a hurricane claim. And now it's been like, you know, two or three years. And now you want to make one. That's a hard, that's a hard case to win. Um, so yeah, if you, if you think that you do have, uh, damage, um, you, you might want to strongly consider making making the claim rather than because if, if 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 you let it sit, that that you might, you know, you might um, be sleeping on your rights to to file suit, okay. or 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 you know have have your claim be uh, paid. Good stuff. That's <laughs> really interesting. Our listeners are listening and learning because that's what this broadcast is all about. Listen and learn. Okay, I'm learning well, a bit. Continue <laughs> on with some of your other points, Joe. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I can't say enough. Report, report your claim timely. That's, that's, that's the big one. Um, I, I talked about uh, taking pictures before the loss. You know, take pictures after the loss as well. Now, if, if, you, if you have your, your claim reported, the, the insurance company is going to take their pictures anyway. So that, that you know, the, but they might not provide you with their pictures. So it's good to have your own pictures. Mm-hmm. And by all means, if it's safe to do this, like you're having a, um, you know, a hurricane happen, we've actually had clients that that you know went on their phones and and took pictures of, of water pouring out of uh, their light fixtures, or, you know, high hats on their ceiling to to show wow. that that you know they had an active leak during the hurricane, um, and this helps because, you know, when you get into litigation, like maybe a year afterwards, and you see pictures. You might know. Okay, here, here's a picture uh, of, of of water damage. But when, when 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 did this actually happen? Like, you know, when 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 did this manifest itself? Was it like you know a, a month after? Was it weeks after? What, you know, was this happening before? So, I mean, if you if you actually have, you know pictures and video of the damage happening while the storm's happening, and you could do it safely. I mean, I don't want anybody to to put themselves at risk by doing it. But you know that 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 that's a good thing to have as well. And and you know you want to take photos of whatever damage you can document. Um, you know, uh, if if you have uh, content, especially contents, because you might want to. If, if if everything gets flooded, like let's say you have a water loss, a burst water pipe, and it, 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 your furniture gets ruined, or your uh, clothes get ruined, or carpets, or whatever, you know, you might want to get that stuff out of your house because you don't want it to get all moldy, or it just might be ruined and falling apart. Um, it, it, to the extent that you can, I would try to keep it so the insurance company could, could see it. Um, but like, for instance, like let's say you have rugs and, <laughs> and, and there's no way to salvage them and you want, you want to get rid of them, at least take pictures of them before you do so. Um, and, and by all means, like if, if you have, like, I think I said this earlier, but if you have like a burst pipe, uh, and you have a plumber come and fix it, don't throw it away. <laughs> you want to, you want to hold on, uh, to that. And if, if, if the, I mean, ideally you, like I said earlier, you want to have the insurance company see everything before, before you have the plumber come out and fix anything. Um, but if, if you can't, if there's some reason why you can't do that, make sure you take pictures and you, and you keep the, the, whatever, whatever pipe or whatever broke, if it was a dishwasher or whatever, you, you keep that so that they can inspect it. Because the worst thing you could do is take, you know, let's say it was a, a dishwasher that, that, or a, or a water heater that, that, that broke and sprung a leak and you throw that away and you replace it. It's going to be hard to, to establish that that was the cause of, of the loss. If it gets, if it gets thrown away. Well, with all due respect, you want to take as many pictures to be visual, but what about the use of videos too? At what yeah. point or how effective uh, is one any more, is one any better than the other videos or photos? Uh, visuals, the name of the game, anyways. Yeah, well, like, like I was saying earlier, um, I mean, if, if we're just talking about a water stain on your ceiling, 
video is not going to help. I mean, right. the, the pictures can be fine. Where the, where the video really helped, and, and, and we actually had clients do this, was an active leak. And you saw the water, okay. like, you know, pulling up and then dripping. The, you know, the, that, that's where the video, or, or you know, again, it, only if it's safe. And like, if, if, if you're during a storm and, and there's uh, impacts to, to your house, you know, uh, from the debris, you know, happening, or if you just want to document the, the force of the storm, of course, if you have shutters all around the house, you can't say anything, there's nothing you can do. But let's say you have impact windows or, you know, uh, or you're a brave soul that, 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 that opens your front door and, and videos it. Like, so I, like I said, I don't recommend this, but, you know, if, if you're going to go out there and do that anyway, it might not, it might not hurt to, to, to document, to show, um, you know, just how strong the winds were uh, because if you, if you have an engineer come out, they'll, they'll, they'll find some way of, of, of getting information from the weather service regarding how strong the winds were. But yeah, if, if you have video showing, you know, trees getting knocked over because of the, of the severity of the wind that, yeah, that, 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 you know, that speaks volumes on, on, on that issue. So yeah, sure. It, 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 it let's put it this way. It couldn't hurt. I um, think that a video with a little bit of a description or narrative to it would certainly yeah. be, uh, yeah, sure, yeah. as well. So sure, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, uh, you can go around your house, like, oh, look, this is the master bedroom, and okay. and look, the the the, the water's coming is is just pouring through through the, the ceiling here and pooling on, on on the ground, and it's getting the the carpet all wet, or 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 the, or the uh, furniture wet, or the 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 hardwood floors wet. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean. It, 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 yeah, that definitely helps because sometimes the pictures that the the insurance company takes, or 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 even the public adjusters, if you have a public adjuster, it's hard to see what the damages is because it's happening after everything's already dried up. <laughs> so there might be some stains or, or whatnot, but rarely are you going to see an inspection photo that shows water all over the place just because by the time an inspector gets there, that's already that's already been cleaned up. So yeah, it, it definitely couldn't hurt. Um, and uh, again, if, if you do have damage that that's severe, you know, if you, if, you hit, if you could do it yourself and get up all that, you know, water yourself, you know, fine. But if, if, if you can't, that's, that's something you might want to hire a professional to do. But what, one thing I would just caution is, you know, uh, some of these companies, uh, they're, not, they're not all created equally. There's some reputable and there's some sort of not so reputable. And some want you to sign a contract with them. Uh, and I would just be careful what, with what you sign because sometimes you can be signing your rights away to some of these companies and give them rights over your, your uh, insurance claim, at least the portion of your insurance claim um, that pertains to, to the, you know, their services. And I've seen some situations where you know, uh, the insurance company is presented with a bill for you know, $40,000, $50,000 for, for a, a water mitigation or a mold remediation or both. And the homeowner had no idea it was going to be that much money. And, uh, you know, so just, just be careful. Just be careful when you're, when you're entering those uh, agreements. You do make uh, a really good point, though. I like what you said about not throwing away any damaged property, keep it and doing it safely. That really, a lot of people would probably overlook such a point, wouldn't they, and take things for granted, yeah. wouldn't they? Well, well, a lot, a lot, a lot of the things I'm saying is just based upon my experience as an attorney with clients who've done these things, um, mm -hmm. where where they have thrown things away and they didn't have photos of it, right. and all they had was uh, a checklist. Yeah, you know, just just so you know that if if you do have property damage, when I say property damage, I mean con contents, you know, personal property contents, um, uh, like like furniture, like clothing, uh, electronics. Uh, you know, rugs, you know, and I'm not talking about carpet that's fixed, but like, you know, you know, uh, like uh, uh, Oriental rug or something like that. Um, the insurance, if, if you have damage to any or any, all of those things uh, and you're going to claim those, the insurance company is going to give you a checklist, a personal property checklist form for you to fill out so that you can say what the item was, you know, how much it's worth, how much it would cost to replace and that's a very hard thing to fill out, you know, because right. um, a lot of times you might be guessing like, okay, this is the, you know, antique dresser that my aunt Mildred gave us, uh, you know, 20 years ago. And how do you, how do you figure out how much that cost? 
Um, or, you know, this is the TV I bought from Best Buy three years ago, you know, whatever. Yeah, you're going to have to go through and, and figure out like what, what it would cost. Now, if you go out and buy another TV, then it's easy. Okay. You know, I, I bought the same type of TV, the same size, whatever. This is what it costs to replace that. That's easy. But yeah, some, some, some things might not be so easy. Um, so that's why, you know, documenting things like, you know, taking photos. And if you have information about certain things, like, you know, let's say you have a stamp collection or you have a, you know, antique uh, train collection, whatever, whatever your hobby is. And, you know, like you know, one of our clients had, had, a, had a train, you know, set from the 1950s that was valuable and other memorabilia that was valuable. If that's the case, th then you're going to have to prove that. So, um, you know, wh whatever documentation that, that you have uh, to document with the value of those things, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to need that to establish your claim. Yeah, Ron made a point on a broadcast, and I love what he did. When we talked about uh, signing agreements, Ron, mm -hmm. why don't you go over that and recap that a little bit? Because oh. we've done a lot yeah, of podcasts that one. Everybody, yeah, a my bit. no problem. L last time we met, basically, I was just talking a little bit about read everything before read anything before you sign it. Because uh, you never know what you get into, which goes into exactly what Joe was saying about, let's say, the mold re uh, mold remediation. Thank you, uh, or or anything like that, or water damage. Or thank you for helping with the word. So yes, read everything before you sign it, and if you're really worried, get hopefully get an attorney that you trust to read it for you. Um, um, so thank you for bringing that up again. And Joe, kind of just to follow what you were saying, want to just let's say you're a homeowner and you have like you said, the train, unique things. Do you recommend people like prior get some kind of appraisal, whether it's for a painting or for a certain art, so they can have something by, you know, I know it costs a little money, but if you, you know, actually have something valuable, would that help down the road if you have an appraisal by a certified appraiser of whatever yeah, the item I, is? Yeah, I, mean, I guess it's, it, it's something you have to weigh. Like if, if I mean, if, if, if it's worth enough that if, if you didn't get compensated adequately for it, if it was you know completely lost, then, then, then yeah, I mean, it, but it really, it really depends. Like, you know, if, is it worth, is it worth it to you? It's, it's, it's a, it's a kind of a risk trade off. It's a, it's a right. risk reward. Like how likely is this going to happen? You know, I mean, do you want to go to the trouble of doing that all? But yeah, if you, if you had a, you know, a painting that's worth a hundred thousand dollars, uh, and that's another thing to, to right. look into. It might you, not cover it. You, you, you have to make sure that, that your personal property and content coverage will cover you for those, the, the, those things. Um, and there's certain things you might have, need to have like a special rider for because um, it, it, it might not be covered. I mean, most people have probably, a, you know, it, it's usually a function of, of what your policy limits are. So if you had a $500,000 policy and it was, you know, um, you know 25%, of of uh, coverage a then, then you 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 know what what, what you, exactly what your pro your property uh damage you know your personal property contents coverage is but yeah you, you that's that's one of those things that you want to talk about with your agent to make sure that you are covered for those things like for instance like you know when my mom got covered she had a a big uh, a grand piano mm -hmm. and she wanted to make sure that was covered if, if, there, if there was a loss and uh you know she went talking to her agent she made sure that that it was covered and she had enough coverage uh, for that. And she had to increase her coverage uh, accordingly. So yeah, that's, that's one of the things that you might, you might not think of. Um, but if, yeah, if you, if you do have some valuable property, you definitely do, do want to, you, you do want to, unless you're going to be able to safeguard that somehow uh, like, yeah, take it to a vault or, or something and, and, and not have to, not have to worry about it. Which makes sense. And I guess you were talking about having pictures. I guess that makes sense because let's say you have a TV and you make a claim on the TV, but if you have like the super duper, was it, oh, you know, the new LLED and, you know, the super stuff that, that may yeah. be a lot more expensive, the insurance company is going to probably presume you don't have the latest and greatest because people are looking out for scams, right? So if you have a picture yeah. of it, it's a lot better than saying, yeah, I had this great electronic system and I had 25 computers in my house and all this kind of stuff. They're not just going to buy it. Right. I, I, re I remember 
years ago because I, I was down here during Hurricane Andrew and a, and a friend of mine um, who lived down in South Miami would tell me stories about in his neighborhood, there were people that were taking items like pianos and satellite dishes. And in those days, they had those satellite dishes that were like, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, the, the, the size of a, of a, of a king size bed. Uh, and they were dragging it from one yard to another yard and dragging the pianos from, from one house to the other house so that they could make claims on, on the stuff. Wow. And, you know, yeah, wow. insurance companies. So I, I mean, I don't know, you know, like, I mean, if you have a, one of those OLED TVs in, in your house and, you know, I, I don't know if you need to take it, have a picture of it. Like if, as long as you're not going to throw it away before it gets replaced, I think you can okay. probably look at the serial number and whatnot um, to, to find out, you know, what, what, uh, what model it is and how, how, how much it costs. But yeah, I, I mean, certain things you would be able to certain things you, you, you wouldn't, but like, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, your, your point is well, is well taken. You, you, yeah, you definitely do want to document those things to the best that you can. Um, and, and, you know, it's a simple, it's a simple matter of, of taking the photos. Now there are certain things, I mean, TV is going to be pretty easy to, to price out, hmm. you know, for replacement. I mean, it doesn't have to be the exact thing, but you know, one OLED TV is going to be pretty similar to another one, unless, unless you have something specific about yours, but you, you could probably look up the pricing information on that. Other items might, might be a little bit more difficult. Like you said, with the art, I mean, that's going to be pretty specific to, um, uh, to, to the item. So that, that's, that's an issue where you, you might want to have it appraised if, 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 uh, if you're really worried about the, the particular item. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Well, what, and I had a question, which is probably what I think you may get into, but let's say you have a, a damage or for whatever, you know, hurricane or pipe, and you really, you can't live in the house while it's being repaired. What, what do you do? What happens next? How does that work? Okay. So you have to check your, your coverage under your policy, but most policies have a coverage, what's called alternative living expenses or uh, uh, loss of use. It could be one or the other or both. Um, and it's a percentage of, of what your, your, your uh, coverage A limit is. It could be 10%, could be 25% again. Um, and you, you, you want to see what, what, what the amounts are, but, but in most cases, it's, it's a sufficient amount for, for you to be able to, to stay at a hotel for a decent amount of time after the loss if, uh, if, if the loss renders your home uh, unfit. And you know, different policies categorize that in different ways. I mean, um, I've had some insurance companies say your house is fit as long as you have, like, a, you, know, you can use the kitchen and one of the bathrooms. Like, so for instance, if your if your house the master bathroom isn't working, but one of the other bathrooms, your insurance company might consider that fit. But um, general generally speaking, they're not going to fight you too much on it. Like if you have like a major disaster, like a hurricane, and you know there's like you know roof leaks and there's water everywhere, uh, the, yeah, they're, they're most likely going to pay for your hotel expenses and the meals associated with that. Because obviously, at a hotel, you're not going to be able to. Uh, cook your own meals. So you're gonna have to eat out. So what you want to do is is hold on to those receipts and, uh, for the hotel and, and for whatever meals that you had out um, and present them to your insurance company. And they should pay for them as you know as, as it's incurred. They're not going to just like say, hey, here's five thousand dollars for for future expenses. Um, but you know they, they they should pay the ones as they're incurred. And if you have to stay out of your house for a longer period of time, like like some of our clients up in or I should say down in the keys, like where their house was a complete and total loss and they weren't going to be going back in the house, you know, you know, anyhow <laughs> until um, it was re repaired or, uh, or uh, completely replaced. They got more permanent uh, accommodations, like, you know, they rent, they rent the place. So you might have a combination of like a, a few, of like a week or so stay in a hotel until you could find another place to live. Um, you know, and rent a place, and your insurance, you know, w would would pay for that up, up to the up to the policy limits. Um, gotcha. Yes. So I've got an interesting question about hurricane shutters and the efficiency of them. And there's another product out there called window film. Now I know window film. What type of 
situations have you encountered, not only with uh, shutters, whether they're accordions, panels, or whatever, and then there's another product out there called window film. Uh, you know, I, I personally don't have any experience with the, with the window film. I, I've had I've heard people tell me about that product, and that it's uh, from from what they tell me, it, it's pretty much the same thing that's on the impact windows. I actually it's, sold that product for a uh, period of time, and it wasn't bad because it's designed to prevent shattering from the glass yeah. to try to get it in. But a lot of it has to do with installation as well. But continue yeah. on. I just it just entered my mind as you were talking about water yeah. damage. Well, I mean, like I said, I don't really know about that particular product. I mean, one caveat I would probably mention is that, you know, the, the impact windows, they're doing more than just putting glass in there that's that shatter resistant. I mean, they're, right. they're bolstering the, 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 the frames um, so that, like, for instance, you know, in our bathroom, we have glass block and uh, we're having an entire house redone with, with um, uh, impact windows. And I, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that they weren't going to have to um, take out all the glass block and replace it with hurricane, you know, glass block or another product. They were able to put like a, a window, um, like a, like a uh, like kind of like a storefront window you and, and put it over the, 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 the uh, glass block, but they have to, you know, it's not just a matter of, of putting that on there. They have to reinforce the, um, the uh, areas are, are around the glass to, to make sure that's oh, also yeah. uh, hur hurricane uh, resistant, resistant as well. But again, I don't really know that much about the, the particular products. I could, I could tell you though, that just making your house sec secure with shutters and uh, windows might not prevent all the damage that you could, you could sustain. Um, there is something called wind-driven rain. And I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but, you know, in a, in a normal, you know, rain shower, rain is just going to come down like this. In a hurricane, it's going to be going sideways. And if you have any place in your windows or your um, walls that aren't waterproof, that water can potentially penetrate. And there are many insurance companies that limit their uh coverage to situations where the water enters your property through a opening really? and define what this opening wow. is but it's a, a, a peril created opening which which they like to define as like a piece of flying debris hit your roof or a window or something and the water came in because because of that um now in a lot of situations that's not what happens you know a lot of times there's roof leaks you don't see a big gaping hole in the roof because like, you know, a tree branch broke off and, and landed on the roof. Sometimes that happens, not always. Same thing with windows. Sometimes hurricanes, windows break and water comes in. Sometimes the water just goes through like, you know, places in the window where it's not completely um, secured because sometimes the, 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 the force of the wind, you know, could, could, could create like temporary openings. Like I don't know if you've ever seen just sliding glass doors like bow in extreme winds, <clears throat> but you know, stuff like that happens and it might lift up the, 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 the tiles or shingles on your roof. Um, it might, you know, it, 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 the water might penetrate through your, your masonry if it's not waterproofed. Um, you know, if you haven't had your home painted and, and waterproofed in, in, in many years, you know, it might become porous. So a lot of people have issues like that. And then they come to find out that their insurance company doesn't want to pay on their claims because they, you know, there wasn't that, that opening. And I always thought like, wow, this is kind of, it's kind of ironic. You know, people uh, spend all this money on, on uh, impact glass and, and, you know, or, or, or shutters and whatnot to secure their homes so that, so that debris doesn't come flying through their windows. And then <laughs> what do they get for that? You know, what water finds its way in some other way, eh, we're not going to cover it. Now, now having said that we've been very successful in getting, those claims paid, even though the insurance company raises those um, de defenses, but still, <laughs> it's just one of those things that the insurance companies use uh, to, to defend themselves. And, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's in the policy. So it's not like it's, it, it's coming out of left field. That's so. a real interesting point coming in from the side instead of the top, because a lot of times and I've been in the 
home improvement business. So I have a little bit of background in that area, right? You actually used to sell roofing uh, material up in the Midwest, which is far different than what you have down here, obviously in the deep South where we're at. But regardless, a lot of it depends on how secure those roofs are and the wood underneath that rotten wood. There's so many other different considerations. We could do 9 million broadcasts on all this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. But, but and, and we should. Keep things in, we, and we probably might at some point, mm -hmm. we probably will. But when you keep things in perspective, Joe, the way you're talking about coming in from the sideways, we talk about the windows, the roofs, the plywood underneath it. You know, and I think a lot of people tend to take it for granted. If you don't have your homes painted and waterproofed, then you know what? There's other ways that most people would subconsciously not think about that would cause a lot of problems and could indeed become expensive, which validates everything that you've spoken about in this broadcast. Yeah. It really has. And I think the one thing we have to make sure that we get out of this broadcast is even though we provided with you folks with a lot of information out there, you have to be able to really look listen to this more than one time because you're not going to get it all at one time. But so when you summarize this broadcast and what we have here, how would you put it all together to put a bow on this, Joe? <laughs> well, one, again, like you said, we're just scratching the surface of, of the various topics that, right. that you could discuss with, you know, uh, insurance uh, readiness and preparedness and what to do after, after claims. That's true. You know, this we, was, <laughs> now I said we we haven't even talked about commercial. We'll have to have yeah. a whole show on commercial insurance. Sorry, Joe. I just was just. No, my head. And we got Ron's wheels turning. Come yeah. on, he's been hanging around me long enough for the man. Hey, you know. Hey, hey and okay. I just thought about commercial and another show about the whole litigation process dealing with these claims. Yeah. But uh, sorry, Joe. Just stuff's coming no, to no, my no, head no, as you're yeah, so, talking. So I mean, we basically we, we barely scratched the surface of, you know, what things that you might want to you know, do before you even have a, a claim just so that you're prepared uh, beforehand, not only uh, with, uh, you know, documenting things about, about your property or, or preparing your property, uh, but making sure you have the right insurance coverage uh, because that's, that, you know, that, that's key. I mean, you, 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 you're only going to be able to file a claim and, and get a, cover, a, a paid Based upon what your coverage is, and if if, if you start out with with a cover with a lack of coverage or not the proper coverage, then you know you're already in the hole. So you want to make sure you have that first, and then uh, and, and then you know there are certain things that you have to do beforehand, before a claim and after a claim, and you want to make you know you want to make sure all all that gets done properly because if it's not done properly, you know you you could compromise your claim and. You know, if you feel comfortable doing it, by all means, you know, do it, do it yourself. There's a lot of people that, that, that can, and they're, they, they, they have the mindset to do it. They're, they have the organization to do it. They have the time to do it. Um, but there are a lot of people out there that, that throw their hands up like, oh, I, this is not for me. I don't want to be bothered with it, or it makes me nervous doing it. Um, I, I, don't, I, you know, I want someone else to take care of this for me. And, that, and that's where we come in. You know, if, 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 if you don't feel comfortable um, – in, in, in the claims process yourself and you need someone to, to help you out. That's why you know, we're here. And, you know, of, of course, you know, if it gets to the point where the insurance company, uh, you know, they're, they're not willing to do anything without litigation, you know, they've, they've, they've come to a point where they, Hey, we're, we're denying your claim or we're, we're, this is all we're going to pay you. Uh, we're not going to pay you anymore. Or if they just stonewall you and don't even get back to you, that, that might be when you have to file litigation um, and, and, and make the insurance company accountable. Yeah, I think what it comes down to is everybody has to be preventative and be thinking ahead instead of, and proactive instead of reactive, because you know what? Uh, so there comes a point in life where if you do things after the fact and you don't prepare what you're going to do, you, it's going to get very expensive. And what I mean by preventative is making sure you do everything on your home that you can so that you don't get to this particular point. No, we can't predict what's <laughs> all about we can't go out there and predict that i i don't like listening to hurricane broadcast because us guys in the media are the bad guys okay <laughs> you get the weather channel oh wait man everybody loves to sensationalize everything but you know what i'd rather us media go out there and take the proactive approach so that you're able to prepare more so than the other alternative and i think that's what i think people should get out of this broadcast yeah, well, it's the, there's that saying, uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And, and 
you know, between making sure that you have adequate coverage and making sure you're prepared before a storm uh, in, in all respects, you know, if you do have to have a claim, it, it, it you know, it'll, it'll definitely help, help you out in, in the long run. Of all the things that you've put on that outline, are there any things that you're aware of that you did not cover that we should uh, talk about right now? Ah, um, let me go through it. That's okay. Just want to make sure that everybody gets a full effect of what we're doing. Just so you know, folks, you're listening to South Florida Tribune Podcast. My name is Scott Morganroth. Ron Renzi has that full brown beard. Me, I don't have a beard that much. And Joe has his uh, facial hair. But meanwhile, we're here to give you a lot of good advice. <laughs> there was an analogy intended there. So my mother, Shiloh Morganroth, is listening. Yes, Mom, I'm stealing a little bit of your thunder. Uh, thankfully, she's still talking and walking. Thank God. But, you know, I want to make sure that we cover a lot of things because this is something, whether you're, whether it's a hurricane related situation or anything that are non hurricane related shows, because I know you have a lot of these pr- type of scenarios that are not limited to hurricanes, Joe, yeah. but they can apply to other facets as well, can't they? Yeah. I, I mean, the, the big ones that we, we see most often are your water losses from a burst water pipe. It, you know, it could be, um, you know, a, a, a toilet or a you know, dishwasher or unfortunately the, the, the worst one that you could, you could have is if it's underneath a concrete slab or something like that, where it's just hard to get to. And um, in, in those situations, just, just know that the insurance company uh, most, almost every policy will say, okay, we're not going to cover for fixing the, you know, the, the, the plumbing system that failed. So you might think, oh, wow, you know, my, my plumber quoted me a price of $10,000 to fix this because he has to dig out, you know, a trench in the concrete to get to the slab, and that's going to, you know, cost a fortune. Just, just know in a situation like that, most insurance policies will pay for the, the cost to access the place where, where you need to go to fix. So, you know, the, 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 the trenching and everything, digging up the concrete, they won't pay for the actual repair of that particular, like, portion of the pipe. But they'll pay, you know, a, 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 a lot of the costs, which is to, to, to do the access. Um, and that, that, yeah, that would be something that, like, if you, unless you're in that situation, it probably would never even occur to you. But, um, you know, you know, when, when I see things like this on a daily basis, you know, you, you, you uh, like, okay, that's, that's, that's another, that's another uh, you know, thing that I didn't know now, now, now that I know and I can impart that, <laughs> that information on, on, on the world. But, um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many things that we could talk about. So, so many different situations that, you know, you might even think of in, 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 until someone asks a question like, hey, what happens in, in this situation? Right, right. But, uh, yeah. Um, but we don't have no eight-layer cake. We got an 888-layer cake, basically. So with that said, okay, Joe, are there any other points that you want to bring out? Uh, no, I, th- I think we hit on, on all the, 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 the major points. Um, do you have any other questions? Well, actually, here's how we wrap this puppy up. You're going to let everybody know how they get old. Yeah, Ron's going to do the same, and then I'm going to give us our information. So, Joe Lippman, take it away. Let everybody know how they can get old of Joe Lippman. We thank Joe Lippman for being on the South Florida Tribune podcast. So, Okay, well, uh, thank Tribune you very much, Scott. And podcast thank you for is that. presented by Wahlberg and Renzi. Had to get that in there. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, so again, I'm Joe Lippman with the Nora Law Group. We're right here in Coral Springs at 9900. West Sample Road, uh, Suite 300. And actually, during this pandemic, we're working remotely, as I know uh, Ron Redzi is, but that has not stopped our ability to help our clients. We are uh, still available by by phone or by Zoom to, to meet and have consultations with, with clients. Uh, we have hearings and mediations and depositions all by Zoom. So we are fully functional, never missed a beat, <laughs> during the pandemic, except for when the courts <laughs> were, were closed and didn't have a plan yet. But now that they do, we're, 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 we've, we've been back in business just like normal for quite some time. If you want to get a hold of us, our telephone number is 954-749-3151. Um, that, if you do call that number, since my, it's my office number, you'll get a message that gives you my cell phone number. So I'll just give you my cell phone number, and that's 954 632 0580. You can see us on the web at claimhealthlawyers.com. 
And if you go there, you can follow us. You can see we're, uh, we're on Facebook. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And I don't know if we're on Twitter. I don't think we're on Twitter yet. But, uh, um, but you can follow us in both of those uh, social media outlets. And I think that's pretty much all the context information that, that we have. That's good. I mean, after all, we're going to be bringing you on to give our uh, viewers some tips and listeners. And we might even throw a sports show at you once in a while as well. Ron Sounds Renzi, good. you're up. I'm up. Well, thank you, everybody. First, I want to commit. Yes, we're going to do a sports show. But I also want maybe we could do a show with Joe where he goes through the litigation of these claims. Absolutely. Now, I, yeah, yeah. I know that's near and dear to my heart. I find that interesting, but I well, think actually, our audience would find it interesting too. Well, actually, what we might consider doing, Ron, is why don't we make Joe on here two weeks from now so we can make this a two-parter? How does that sound to do litigation? Yeah. And then we can, uh, Joe? whatever plans we yeah, have. That, 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 that sounds good. Actually, you know, Ron, you bring up, you bring up a good point because I think there's a lot of people, we, you, know, you and I just take it for granted what, what litigation is because we've been doing exactly. this for so long. But most people don't, and you know, I, 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 I have to re- remember that when I'm dealing with our clients, that they don't know how all this goes, or a lot of them at least uh, don't, because they've never been involved in a lawsuit ever in, in their life, and you know, they don't know what a deposition is. Yeah, you know, they don't know right. that it's it's something that's not in court, and it's just you know something that happens outside of court, and there's no judge there, or or same thing with a mediation. Right. So, and, and a lot of times, yeah, we'll get calls from, from clients. Hey, how's my claim going? Like, like a, a week after we filed, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to have to be way. a little bit patient because nothing is going to happen. You know, so, sometimes, you know, sometimes, yes. I mean, we filed a, a lawsuit for one of our clients about a week or so ago and yeah, it, it, we settled it yesterday. So sometimes, wow. sometimes you do have uh, cases where, where things settle very quickly that's not usually the typical situation. And yeah, I think it would be a good idea for, pe- for, for people to know what. All right. So then here's what we're going to do. We'll make a decision here. So we'll give everybody a reason to watch like they should any t- ways to begin with. Two that's weeks right. from today, we're going to do litigation. Joe Lippman, uh, Motor City Madmouth, and his uh, p- partner in litigation uh, called my CYA, uh, although that could be anything, you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, you can fill it in any way you want. Well, otherwise known as my right-hand man. So get ready for part two with Joe Lippman, myself, and Ron Renzi. And we'll talk about litigation. All right, Ron, proceed. Let everybody know how they can get hold of you. And I'll fast my way, talk my way to give us all right. Sure. Thank you, Scott. My name is Ron Renzi. My law firm is Wahlberg and Renzi PA. We're also located in Coral Springs, Florida. Uh, literally, probably cross the street from Joe, actually. We're at 101. West Sample Road on the third floor. Our number is 954-757-1212, uh, wwwwalberg renzycom You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And we practice in the area of appeals and, and um, some commercial litigation. Uh, Scott? Ron also is my legal advisor, helps me out when I have some questions. And we, too, are also located on Sample as well, mm-hmm. right near uh, Tavolino del Norte. So if you know where that is. Oh, you're right across the street from me. Opposite. Yeah, we're all in the neighborhood, even though you guys are <laughs> home. I'm not. Can't be. But anyways, you are listening to South Florida Tribune Podcast. To, uh, to, to listen to the audio portion of the broadcast, you can do so with Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If I talk too fast, like everybody tells me to do anyways, I'll give you an audio replay, all right? Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Also, other uh, social media information you should be aware of. You can contact, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Tribune South. That's at Tribune South. You want to follow us on Facebook, Instagram? No problem. Since hockey playoffs are in full swing, you can do so at the South Florida Tribune. That's called the hat trick because that hat trick leads us to the YouTube channel for which you're looking at the broadcast, the visual part of it, and the auto I already mentioned. So subscribe to the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel. Then you get to look at all three of us and everybody else that is brave enough to go ahead and do this thing visually. Okay, so (laughs) also the website, www.southfloridatribune.com. You'll find all of our broadcasts on there. 
and all kinds of content information for our writers, our media distribution partners, and once again, as I mentioned before, the broadcast side. You can email us at southfloridatribune at gmail.com. And if you're brave enough to connect with me on LinkedIn, Scott Morgan Roth gets it done. I don't know how many of those there are. Now, if there were Scott Morgans, you might have a problem. But Scott Morgan Roth, you should not have a problem. And I should point out that the three amigos here are part of the Coral Springs Regional Chamber of Commerce Wednesday group. So Shirley Klein, Mike Del Pozo, and everybody that's brave enough to watch this broadcast. And if I'm missing some of you guys out, I'll get you the next time. Anyways, here we are talking some information, making sure everybody in our home area is fully educated. That's my version of educated, okay? And we have a part two. But, you know, it's been a great broadcast with you guys. Look forward to doing more of these with you. And we hope that everybody's gotten something out of it. If you can't uh, listen to it the first time, don't worry. Take your note, pen, and paper. There's no paper shortage to get the information because they, knowledge is power if it's applied. And I'd like to think tonight we definitely gave you all of that. So on behalf of Joe Lippman, Ron Renzi, my name is Scott Morgan Roth of Motor City Manmouth. Thank you for joining us tonight. Once again, you can visual. You can see this thing on our YouTube channel. It will also be posted to Facebook as well. So for those of you looking for the video, it'll be up shortly. So, guys, it's been a whole lot of fun tonight. And you know what? We're going to do it again. How about that? <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Ron. I look forward to it. Have a good and, night, uh, everybody. And no, also, I should point out before we get off the broadcast, <laughs> please be safe. Take COVID-19 seriously. This stuff is the reason why a lot of us are – stuck and have cabin fever though a lot of people like it anyways but anyways until the next time this is the motor city mad mouth signing off